Hello once again and welcome to part 2 of this week's Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 update. And you'll notice rather obviously on this planet, we're out, we're out on Kothar at the moment, which is Mike's planet where all the iridium comes from, and you might notice there's a bit of a shortage of power at the moment. And that is actually deliberate, and it's because over down here, Mike has been decommissioning the free power system. And this is the, this is the system that pulls in pulls in water, grows trees with it, and then the trees get turned into biomethanol, and you return that into electricity. And so um, we've been trying to decommission these all over the uh, all over the solar system because we reckon they're going to be extremely bad for UPS. They're just going to cause the, cause the entire game to slow down rather a lot. Um, we think that might be one of the reasons everything's been running so slowly. And so, out on the other planets, I've just been ripping them up, which has mean, meant that all of the wood that's been stored in these greenhouses, and on all these belts, and in these chemical plants, and so on, has then been just being poured back into the, uh, in, in, into the logistics system. So there's massive quantities of wood to get rid of. And Mike's system is, is significantly bigger than the one I had set up on Talos. I'd say it's maybe twice, maybe three times as big. And so, he hit on the uh, actually quite smart idea of coming in and, and modifying the recipes that all these machines use. So, instead of using the standard recipe, uh, this this one, where you just pull in water and it magically turns it and, it and it grows trees, but it takes quite a long time. As you can see, 800 water, 120 seconds. There is an alternative recipe. In fact, there's two alternative recipes that pull in sand as well. It takes less time, or sand and fertilizer, and it takes presumably even less time. Oh, and it produces more wood as well, so 20, 40, 80 wood. So, so this one is far more effective, but it, or at least far quicker, but it requires some inputs. Inputs that we don't have here. And so that means that these, that these uh, greenhouses, yes, they've been pulling in the water still, but they've been trying to pull in fertilizer and sand, and that just straight up means they've not been working. And so that means that we, um, the the, uh, the wood has been gradually been used up by the rest of the system up here. Now, previously we we'd thought of an we thought it'd be a good idea to try and use the wood up somehow, but we, we but we'd ha realised that if we just try and if we just cut off the water supply down here, that would cause these systems up here to fail because we need to turn water into steam in order to make them biomethanol in order to grow the in order to to generate the fuel. Now the problem with this is that now that we, now that we've run out of power over here. The biters are starting to um, get a little bit over-friendly, and they're destroying chunks of the wall. They're starting to take out some of the lasers, and this is this is this is a bad thing, TM. Fortunately, in order to get the uh, the system to this state, all that Mike did was turn off this space elevator's power. So if I hit the down button there, and then we can look back over here again, you notice the radar just kicked back in again. Suddenly we have power. We've managed to slaughter those biters. Everything is well in the world again. Okay, there's been a little bit of damage over here, but basically everything is now all all well once again. So the system is now the, the base is now up and powered again. Everything everything can start working because one of the things that Mike did last week that I missed out and didn't point didn't point out when I was looking at it was he's put in a space elevator here. And if we look up in Kothar orbit, we can see he's brought in his uh, construction ship over here, and also he's built up a massive area of um, of solar up here. I'm not quite sure which country has the uh, the blue red blue flag, but um, anyway, he's got enough solar up here now to provide to, to pump all that power into the space elevator. How much is he producing? Out of curiosity. Uh, 2.1 gigawatts available, and he's using 777 megawatts of it. So yeah, he's got he's got a bit of headroom there, and that means that everything down here is now able to start running again. Uh, he just needs to make sure he flicks the switch at the right time so that things don't break too much. The other big thing that Mike has been up to has been over here, where previously the um, the the iridium ore and the iridium iridium core chunks were all being brought in here and appropriately pulverized, turned into the ore that was then being crushed down here, and then it was being passed through some standard chemical plants and. Um, and to be turned into the blast cake, and this system wasn't really working very well. It wasn't able to keep up, um, partly because it was it was a whole the whole thing was a horrible horrible mass of spaghetti belts, but also just because these machines aren't the the old machines aren't all that fast, and they haven't been built up to the, sort of the more modern standard. So Mike has now upgraded all of these to the advanced chemical plants, filled them up with tier three productivity modules, a, a, a wide area beacon with tier three uh, speed modules in there, and over here, yes, he's upgraded all of these to the tier three modules as well. So everything will now be a bit more productive uh, while still running at I believe probably about the same speed maybe maybe even a bit quicker the problem however is that you run out of vulcanite so in theory the vulcanite is being dropped in by delivery cannon here so it's, it's dropping in here it's been passed into this warehouse and then off down these belts where it can be made into the cation exchange beads which are then passed down here into the uh, into into the chemical plants which allow the which allow it to be processed to come up here is the next step that the um, and be fed is the powder and then be turned into the blast cake which can then be t taken over here and, and cooked in the in, in 
the um, in the furnaces. Unfortunately, this whole thing has, as I say, ground to a halt because of a lack of vulcanite. And so if we trace this backwards, we can go to Agnea, where all the vulcanite comes from, and we'll see that, yes, there is actually quite a lot of vulcanite available here, but unfortunately, everything is kind of ground to a halt because there is a distinct lack of delivery cannon capsules coming out of here. And there's a lack of delivery cannon capsules because we're not getting any heat shield tiles brought in. Um, and so that's caused this to grind to a halt. And we're not getting any heat shield tiles brought in because over here on Norvis, this whole system has ground to a halt. And I was going to say, oh look, it, it's because the stone, the stone bricks have run out, but I'm not sure what's going on here. Why is this stopped filling up? This is completely... What? Why is this limited to two rows? That's very strange. Now, it is broken because we've run out of stone, sure, but I don't understand why this has ground to a halt here. There's something very fishy going on here. This needs looking this needs looking into and we need to work out why that's two rows instead of the full 16 rows that we should be that we need for a train. Um so that's rather odd. Maybe I would guess I would say, ah, oh, I think I know what's happened. Yes, Tristan has has modified this area over here to take it down to only only having one warehouse instead of the five warehouses. The the improved design here, um, but he hasn't changed the filter size on the 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 limit size on the warehouse. So we need to we need to put this back up to uh, sixteen or you know about about that many. That's probably going to be enough. So that'll end pouring. It's still not going to be enough to call a train, but at least we've um, we've solved that that short term problem. The more serious problem is that we're not getting the stone bricks in here that need to be turned into the stone tablets in order to be turned into the heat shield tiles to be passed around here and, and shipped out with it. The stone bricks come from way down here somewhere. Um, this particular system, system down here, where we are bringing, where we we we're making stone bricks in appropriately huge quantities. Although for some reason we're using electric furnaces rather than anything more advanced. I think that might be because you actually can't use more advanced furnaces um, because that doesn't seem like a mistake uh, Mark would make when he when he built the system. So in theory we have massive quantities of stone coming in here, being turned into stone bricks, being turned in passed down here to be taken off to be turned into heat shield tiles. Unfortunately, this train isn't quite full because. We've run out of stone, so we need a bit more. We need a lot more of that for basically everything that's going on here. And now I don't know exactly why we're short of stone. And I mean, a lot of it has been used for carpeting huge areas of the base. Maybe we should pull up all of these stone bricks that are filling these sort of areas. All all these stone bricks could be pulled up and put back into the system and turned into uh, and turned into heat shield tiles. Maybe that would be a worthwhile thing to do. But also, I think we sort of need to sort out why we have a shortage of stone. Um, so over here, there is. We are produce, generating some stone over here. There is, there's half a train's worth in here, but we don't seem to have an enormous number of core chunks coming in. There's some, but I don't know why it seems to be a bit. Why we seem to be a bit low on them? Maybe we need more stone mines. And I think Tristan did did uh, create a new one. And I'll touch a little bit more on why and where and how and what and all that, lots of stuff. But it's up here. It says there is a stone mine up here that is is completely full. So it looks like our low priority stone deliveries aren't working. Maybe we just need more trains going out and collecting the stuff, um, collecting the low priority stone as opposed to the high priority stone. But it does feel quite weird to be to be have this much stone. Oh, yeah, you see over here we have. 100, 125,000 stone in this mine that just isn't being touched. So it looks like we're not bringing low priority stone over to here. We're only bringing in the high priority stone, but we've used it all up because it was the high priority. So we just churned through it as quickly as possible. Um, and now we only have 100,000 sta 100 stacks in here, which isn't enough. So yeah, there's some there's a lot of fixing needed there. And the extended problem with that is that we use the stone stone or the stone bricks for various other things as well. So, for example, over here, we have stone being dropped off in the old smeltery area. Actually, we now have enough of this, so that's 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 changed a little bit. But that's being turned into glass, and it's part of the rare metal production as well, because we need to turn the sand into uh, hydrogen chloride in order to get in order to make the, purify the rare, me rare metals in order to get more out. That said, the rare metals have clearly caught up. We have uh, many, many full where well, we have warehouses down here that are as, as full as they're going to get. Maybe that's all right. Maybe that's all, we, all we're going for with these. But you can see there's a lot of places around the base that require stone, and so that's 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 been causing some problems. So as I say, that the the lack of stone has meant a lack of a lack of stone bricks, which has meant a lack of heat shield tiles, which has meant a lack of delivery cannon capsules, which has meant a lack of vulcanite over on Agnea, which has meant a lack of vulcanite over on Kothar, which has meant that this whole system has ground to a halt, and we've not been making any iridium for actually quite a while now. So it would definitely be very worth getting this up and running. This is one of the areas where I would like to get the spaceships up and running because that way we don't have to worry about delivery cannons. All we're using there to transport stuff around is ion stream, and that way we could bring. Most of a, a significant chunk of a spaceship's um, worth of vulcanite over to here, and just get that and get the system flowing again. So that would be that would be rather nice. Still, 
He's improved. He's modernised the system quite a bit, and once the uh, once the ingredients start coming in that aren't his fault, um, I don't know who's for who to blame the stone on. That's sort of a group thing. But the the vulcanite is sort of is my problem to deal with. Uh, once we get all of that coming in and everything starts working nicely, then Mike will have plenty of uh, iridium coming out of here. I expect uh, we shall we shall see once he's been able to turn it back on again. <laughs> Oh, and as another side note on this planet, he's now started making the uh, pollution filters locally. He put a note on the map for me. There we go, this is new. So he's, he started making the pollution filters here as well because he didn't have enough of them. So now we've got lots and lots of them being fed in down here. They're all dr dribbling out round the, um, r round the system out here. And if we look at the map, I suspect we're going to see there's been quite a lot of leaky pollution. Partly because he ran out of filters, but also partly because he ran out of power because of dealing with all of the wood down here. And we didn't know he'd done that and we carried on playing for about an hour after he went to bed on Monday because uh, we got a little bit distracted and didn't realize quite how far we got in so there's going to be a few biter attacks coming up against the walls over here in the next um, in the next stream but I think they'll probably be able to deal with it there are probably yeah there's enough lasers along here I think it'll all be okay and the biters will clean up for him isn't that nice of them the next thing I want to look at is the resource tracking system. So you'll remember this from an earlier episode. Tristan built the system up over here, and this monitors signals from all over the uh, the bases down on uh, Norvis, and is also now receiving a signal from Norbit as well, so we can monitor even more stuff. So across the bottom here, you can see we've got the, the standard... Um, mundane resources so iron and copper and, and the ores for them as well and the ingots for them as well steel silicon rare metal plastic uh, lithium and, and so on all the way over here uh, including belts liquids and now we've also got science cards being shown as well including some we haven't made yet and the catalogs for the uh, for the more advanced science packs over here so the idea is that we using all of this we can tell what we're short of and even better there's now an alert system so all of these speakers across the top of here they don't make noises because that would be um, obnoxious and excessive but all the things that we're short of we now have an alert system popping up down here so we can tell at a glance without needing to go and look at this because to be honest whilst this is very very pretty and and it look it looks great uh, we never came over and looked at it now they're showing up in the bottom corner of the screen, so we can see that we're short of green circuits, rare metals, purple belts, there's a couple of bus stations that need some attention, and we're short of stone. Um, oh yes, that's another place where the stone's going, into making circuits, and that's probably one of the highest priorities because they're really, really close together. So we're making, and so even despite, even with the, um, the stone all disappearing into that system, apart from the low priority stuff, <clears throat> as we discussed, we're still very, very short of green circuits and red circuits and blue circuits as well. So we don't we don't alert until it gets down into the red. So we've got at this point we are short of green circuits, we're short of stone, we're very short of rare metals. Interestingly, given that the station was full, so that obviously needs to be needs to have its numbers tweaked a little bit. We're also short of purple belts. I don't think that's so much of a problem. We don't have an enormous amount of um, of, of green uh, catalogs, but everything else is pretty much we're, we're doing pretty well for pretty much nearly everything else. Actually, oils oil has just dropped enormously. That's kind of scary, watching the thing tick down like that. It's, uh, yeah. Um, and, yeah, and, and the rare metals, I say. And we seem to be short of iron ore as well, so that's something else that's going to need to have be, be looked at a little bit. Uh, in fact, almost all the oil is just disappearing before my very eyes. That's a little bit alarming. So presumably we now have a, yes, we now have a pop-up saying we're low on oil as well. So... You can see that we, we we have some problems over here, but at least this is this enables us to keep an eye on what is currently a problem, and maybe then go out and sort some of these. I did mention earlier the stone that's going in for the hydrogen chloride to make the rare metals down down here. Um, apparently, this is one of this is one of the things that Tristan's fixed. So I think I don't know whether he. Oh, I think he put in an extra priority station. Yes, there's an extra priority station down here. So one of the stone priority trains should come to here. And then this will be a priority drop off because this is this turned out to be important to keep running because we ran out completely. Um, however, I don't understand why we don't seem to have any um, any non -pri any low priorities. There's there we go. There's a, a train waiting at a stone mine there, but despite the fact there's all these places calling for trains, it doesn't seem to be doing anything. That's 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 a bit weird and a bit worrying. Uh, we as I say, we will have to look into that. He's done some expansion as well because we discovered that the base was actually slightly concave and that means that as bots were trying to fly from one place to another they were getting shot down by biters on the, or by spitters and worms on the way through. Now I think the problem was over, I, th I think the area he has claimed now is this area over here and I don't know exactly how much of it is claimed but it's going to be this sort of this sort of general area and he's done that by trundling out there with the uh, with the artillery train with nuclear artillery blowing up all of the biter nests the biters have thrown themselves against these 
extremely strong walls, uh, and then he's been able to build out, out that way. And if I show you the robot port on the electricity network, you can see that he's just completely covered this area um, with, well, with robots and with power. There seems to be a bit of a gap here, though, uh, and none of these have power, so uh, well done there. Um, I think we're going to need another... Just one more pylon like that uh, in order to link those together because we yeah if the biters come down and investigate this wall it's, it's not going to go very well for the wall put it that way but then around the rest of it up here yes this all seems to be nice and solid and as part of that he's claimed this stone mine that i pointed at earlier and possibly the possibly like and probably that core mine as well i think let's turn these back off again because i can't see anything of what's going on when they, when all that's over all over the screen and there's another stone patch there it's not a very big one though um and yeah so the, we've, we've gained a few more resources and there's another um another core team there that we could, we could potentially tap and yeah there, there, there's potential for more expansion and more uh, and more resource gathering out this way he's done some work down on the on the uh, downstream stations over here so there's been some upgrades on the belts here and the idea is that now upgrading putting in more green belts around here and upgrading these these to purple and these to green and uh, actually leaving these ones under red these should probably be blue but never mind um, this means we'll be able to unload the trains a little bit more quickly when they arrive here pull resources through that bit faster and just get everything flowing through so the train so whatever train arrives here on the downstream can carry on and clear off and get and, and take and get get the resources taken back up as, as, as it's supposed to and with us now bringing a load of junk over from Talos that's all going to be coming down the downstream stations as well that means there's going to be a bit more stuff happening over here and so it makes it makes it a little bit more important to have good throughput here and we may decide we need a third one of these trains we'll see how it goes though at the moment the uh, the two trains is, is quite capable of keeping up but in the future well we shall see he's also added in uh, liquid rocket fuel and this is something i forgot to mention in yesterday's uh, video so there's another train over here now doing yeah taking liquid rocket fuel up so this is being brought over from oh, I don't know. Somewhere, there'll be somewhere that will be turning uh, solid rocket fuel into liquid rocket fuel. I would sort of expect it to be in the big oil area, wherever that is over here, because this is where the solid rocket fuel is is being created. But that doesn't seem to be the case. So, but somewhere, somewhere it is being turned into liquid rocket fuel, um, and that's being shipped up in, one, in, in in the trains that go up to orbit. And that is because these uh, personal trains that Mark has been making also have rocket booster tanks in them. And this is so, in theory, they're going to be able to land on planets. Now, I have a slight concern about this because I'm not sure that two rocket booster tanks is going to be enough fuel for one of these ships to take off from another pla from a planet. I could drop it down to Norvis and find out. Actually, that could be entertaining. Um, but I suspect the ship is going to be a bit too big for those two booster tanks. You know what? Let's do an experiment and find and find out because this is basically harmless because um, I'm not going to be saving this. But so we'll 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 find out what this what, what happens here. It obviously doesn't take very long at all to fly to Norvis. We can just wait wait for that to happen. The speed is it's capable of doing a speed of 100. It's very very little distance to Norvis at all. So it's um it's got there now. We can anchor it on Norvis. We'll have it touch down here because that is a place. Shoop. And then yes, launch is disabled, so um, that's that's going to be a problem. Um, launch energy we have about half. I mean, it's, it's a bit more than half, but it's it's roughly half. So we would need another two of these tanks in order for, in order for this ship to take off. Um, so yeah, that's going to need to be changed. Uh, we could probably take out two of these solar panels and, and stick another couple of booster tanks in there, and then it'll work. But for now, well, I'm afraid, Mark, I've just stranded your ship on Norvis. Sorry about that. Speaking of Mark, he has also started making the superchargers, and these these things are quite interesting. Um, these can be put out. They're they're sort of a bit like a RoboPort, except the robots can't park in them, and they're capable of charging about a million of them at once. So let's stick one down. As you can see, it's linked to all the nearby RoboPorts. It's got a, a reasonable range, about the same, probably about the same as a RoboPort in construction mode. And if you click on it, there's nowhere for robots to park in it. But I, but hopefully on the right hand side, yeah, there you go. You can see it can charge up to 64 robots at a time. It's also possible that it might not need space scaffolding. No, it does need space scaffolding to be put on. Okay, but you can you can then build these things out, and they'll and then and you get a certain amount of extra. And you can you can you can use these essentially on routes where you expect lots and lots of bots to fly, because that way they can they can all charge up much more quickly, much more effectively, and you won't you don't have to wait ages for the robots to get over to where they're going. Well, you still have to wait quite a long time, but it's going to be a lot quicker because they'll all be able to plug in all the way around here and, and you'll have lots and lots of them charging very very quickly and all together. They also will use enormous amounts of power because they can consume a gigawatt all by themselves if they're um, if they're charging up 64 robots at the same time. I kind of hope that never happens because that is a lot of power. <laughs> Although I suppose we can we can just about cope given we have 16 gigawatts of um, generator capacity up here so yeah they if you've got a lot, if you're having a absolute bot frenzy and they're flying a very long distance, and having these things all the way along the, the route will make an enormous difference. But I, I'm, I sort of hope we won't do that very often, to be honest. 
And that brings me to the end of my list, which means it's time to have a look at the research. So what have we done since the last one? We have done work at robot speed 9, which means our robots zip around a bit more quickly. They maybe go a bit further between charges. I'm not quite sure, but, you know, it's one of these. It's one of those to just soak up some uh, science packs when you're doing stuff, because it, it takes 4,800, which is, it's quite a lot. So, you know, this, these sort of things, they, they'll, they'll allow you to, they, allow, they make the robots a bit better. Sure, great, lovely. Um, not enormously exciting, but it helps. It'll help a little bit. We've researched fusion energy. Now, this sounds quite a lot more exciting, but I don't know an enormous amount about it. Um, it appears to be just another type of reactor. Uh, oh, and we get advanced steam turbines from it as well. That's quite nice. Heavy water, tritium, which we've already got a little bit of because it came out of the... Um, somewhere, I think it was recycling uh, nuclear fuel cells. It came from somewhere anyway. And we can make uh, DT fuel cells as well. Uh, so, yeah, this will be another way of generating power. Might be useful for spaceships that are going into Stellar, or we might do that a different way. We shall see. But to be honest, given that we're generating all of our power from solar these days, and that doesn't require any resources at all, I feel like this might this might not be something we'll use very much. Um, although, uh, that, although the, the fuel is reasonably cheap, uh, lithium is very cheap. Rare metals we've got quite a lot of. Uranium, it's, it's not very much uranium, so if that makes that makes five tritium, which can then make five fuel cells, that's not bad. It could be quite a cheap way to make power that could be carried around uh, that can be carried around by a spaceship or something. And also I notice here we've got the portable fusion reactor. That might be a good upgrade for the uh, reactor I've got in my suit at the moment, which is a bit pathetic. We've been very, very busy on the module front. We've made a uh, Speed modules five to seven, which uh, so that's this one here, uh, five, six, and seven. I think you only get one, you only get one of them showing in because they're they're one of these tiered research things where you can see it's got a number in the corner there. So we did five, six, and seven. So this has made some, some much better speed modules. That that um, this this one will give you a two a uh, eighty percent speed boost. That's immense. But in order to make it, you require enormous amounts of stuff. So they're really really expensive. Similarly, we've gone up to efficiency seven, and then this this uh, one will get us. An energy consumption of minus 560%, which is absolutely fantastic for uh, taking off some of some of the the peak of the energy power that um, that the speed modules or the productivity modules will uh, will cause. I I don't think we're going to use these an enormous amount because we have so much very very cheap power coming from solar these days. But it might come in useful. Um, it also reduces the amount of pollution you produce. But again, these are astonishingly expensive. Look at that, 100 quantum computers. That's astonishing, and massive amounts of other stuff as well. We've got Breaking Force 7. There's a lot of 7s going on in the research today. Uh, this means the trains slow down slow down more quickly. They can, they, can, they can brake harder, which means they can travel at full speed for longer before they start decelerating to go into stations, which has two advantages. One, it means they get, there, get to wherever they're going slightly sooner because they can stay at full speed for a bit longer. But more importantly, they can stay at full speed on the main line for a bit longer. And so whatever train is following them doesn't have to slow down because the train in front has slowed down in order to go into a station. I don't think we have enough trains traveling around our uh, factory for this to be a particularly serious and particularly useful um, upgrade but you know it's it is there it's a it's, it's a nice one to go to and it only costs 325 and it's only up to tier 2 material science so you know you might as well you might as well just get the uh, the, tra the train braking force improvement we've researched rocket turrets so these are these are rocket these are turrets that fire rockets out of clearly so um they're going to be, be enormously dangerous against um against against the bite, biter incursions i assume and they've got two choices you've got explosive rockets or nuclear rockets now the idea of having a, a, a defensive turret that fires nuclear rockets is absolutely terrifying i think i might just steer quite clear of that one that said i do feel like i should probably start using laser artillery turrets a bit uh, we aren't making them anywhere yet but none of the stuff in in that list there is is unachievable. The holmium solenoids and heavy girders, they're both sort of they're exotic materials, specifically iridium and holmium, that have been processed quite a bit. So we would like to be able to, we would like to have that being shipped in by a spaceship and being processed on Norvis before we start really using it in, in, in huge quantities in order to make stuff like this. But you know, making a few of them might be quite fun because but when you're going out and doing sort of taking combat to the biters yourself, okay, the artillery is pretty good, but having these things in there as well to sort of to soften up whatever waves of biters come to attack you afterwards would be very very nice. We're also doing some research on artillery range. So we've got range 1 and 2 and with 3 and 4 currently being researched. This does exactly what you'd expect. It makes the art gives the artillery a slightly longer range so you can shell everything from a little bit further away. Um, that could potentially be quite useful for me on Talos where I have the nuclear artillery uh, gun set up in the middle of my base and just shooting out to wherever I need to. Now, I mean, at the moment, it's absolutely ridiculous. Let's, let's, let's take a look at that because it is genuinely ridiculous. Okay, if we go out to Talos and turn on show turret... 
ranges. So you can see we've got these red, we've got these red blobs where all the lasers are. Great. You can also see just about yeah. There's a red circle going around here. This is the range of my artillery turret, which isn't all that special at the moment. However, if I get the artillery remote out, um, then it goes all the way. It basically covers the entire area I can see. If I put it just a little bit lower, it would it would almost perfectly fit this circle. But at the moment, it's going coming around. I'll, I'll put a highlight on the screen so you can see it a bit better because it is a bit difficult to see over the sand. But it's basically covering the entire area I can see. It's it's it's, it's amazing at them already. So getting extra artillery re research done, it'll push it out a little bit further, sure. But it's just going to be a bit. Um, it's a bit ridiculous already, basically, is what I'm trying to say. The other slight problem is, when we do get that research done, this artillery range will increase slightly. And that means the artillery is then going to automatically start firing at all these nests around here, just outside its, uh, its current range. And that's all very well. The problem is, that means we'll then start getting some attacks coming in. Um, and... I think my I think my walls around here actually there are looking at this there are enough lasers that we, we should be absolutely fine, but it's still a little bit of a concern that we're going to get so, suddenly going to get attacks coming in, and this is going to be the case on probably quite a few of the planets anywhere where one of the artillery pieces has been set up and just left in the middle, it may well start it may start shelling and then the the biters might uh, take an interest. <laughs> So that's it for the researches. The only other thing now is to bring to bring up is the is the list of deaths. Um, unfortunately, things went a little bit badly for me, as I was saying yesterday. Uh, the the uh, we had we had that incident over here where I went over to try and take on the biters. There was there was uh, some horrible problems with frame rate at the time because probably probably because artillery was being used. I I, I didn't judge how how fast I was going and landed landed in the wrong place and got. I was going to say I got eaten, but apparently I apparently I didn't. Apparently I got spat to death. Um, and that was so that that was rather unfortunate. And uh, we'd, we'd, I, I would rather that hadn't happened, but in the in the in the long run, it's not not the end of the world. And I'm still behind Mark and, and Mike with a number of deaths, so it hasn't changed the order at all. But it was definitely a bit unfortunate. I shall have to be a lot more careful in the future. And so that brings us to the end of the episode. As always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. We'll be back on Monday, where we should be uh, continuing with the streams and pushing out the uh, the the. Um, I'm pushing out the, the base in all kinds of directions. Hopefully I'll get Talos completely finished and be able to leave it. Hopefully I'll get out to Agnea. Hopefully lots of other things will happen. You'll have to come along and find out, won't you? Um, then on Wednesday I should be playing XCOM. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I haven't done this week's stream yet, so I don't. I, I can't. I can't tell you how it was last week in, in, in the previous one. But next week hopefully will hopefully will go very well. We shall see. Um, and I, I would like there to be another car video coming out. That comes down to whether I've had time to edit it, and um, and life is a little bit full at the moment. But I'll try and I'll try and get more videos coming out as ever. So as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and all those other things YouTubers always tell you to do. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.